it is our hope and love that today's meeting is going to be very impactful and beneficial to all. At this point, I want to invite the moderator, Mr. Gould Mavalaji, to take over for me. Mr. Gould, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Good morning, you. everybody, my very senior colleagues. I greet everybody and I welcome everybody to this session organized by the uh, pharmacy department, UITG Loring. Uh, uh, as a tradition, we'll just uh, informally whisper uh, a one minute prayer and commit this session to God. And we pray that uh, uh, God guides on our step and make this uh, impactful and a very successful uh, meeting. Uh, introducing the guest speaker, Professor Modashi Yusuf Onadere from Department of Education, Technology University of Illinois. He will be uh, talking to us about the theme of this meeting, which is video conferencing apps for pharmacists, physicians, nurses, and other health professionals. The advantages, the reasons, the whys, the, the, the what, and the how. He's going to be taking us through for about 45 minutes. After his um, meeting and his talk with us, we'll be having a short video of six minutes uh, that will give us an enlightenment and uh, a view, uh, a different perspective. Then after that, we'll be having Femtech IT for 10 minutes. Then we will tolerate comments, questions, and answer. While our prof is talking, we'll be uh, coming in uh, one uh, once in a while, the moderator will be coming in once in a while to put in a few uh, additions to complement, to ask questions, something that are not clear. It's Thank you so much uh, for coming and joining us. We really appreciate. On behalf of the pharmacy department, we appreciate everybody that is on board and everybody that will be coming on board. And now we will have our uh, Professor Mudashir Yusuf Olaleri to start uh, his talk with us. Thank you. Professor Mudashir, you are on. Thanks so much for the privilege. The head of the pharmacy department, the nutrition hospital, the staff and colleagues who are also on with us. I'm uh, delighted to be here this morning to present and then discuss, lead it, just lead a discussion on uh, one, we are looking at what is current now, and that is the issue of uh, video conferencing. Video conferencing is uh, the main thing now, actually, for every profession. We are looking at it from the perspective of the health professionals. So I will please plead with the host to allow me to be able to share my screen. The host, please, is, is still disabled for me. I can't share my screen. Yes, you can, you can go ahead, sir. Okay. Then, secondly, I will advise you, you can uh, stop the audio of, of, your, of your YouTube channel. It's interfering with the, with the show. <clears throat> so, I have uh, this presentation, a 25-page presentation. I wish I have to deliver within 20, uh, 45 minutes. Normally, for each slide, you are supposed to have three, three, three minutes. But I'm going to, there are some areas. This presentation, as, uh, as soon as I finish, it's in PDF for me. And now I'm going to give it, send it to the host so that he can share it with us immediately. So, video conferencing apps for pharmacists, physicians, nurses, and other health professionals, the way. And the why and the how. So I have this uh, framework which I'm going to use for my presentation. First, I have an aspect that is introduction. I'm going to rush through that aspect. I have the issue of the video conferencing, which had been in the S sector as telehealth before now. And I'm going to talk about why telehealth. Then the issue of privacy in terms of patients, which is very important in the in the health sector. 
The next is going to be the dunes of Tele Earth. The next is the dunes of Tele Earth, of video conferencing. And then security issues in Tele Earth. And I'm going to, to do a capstone with the conclusion. So each of these sectors, I'm going to talk about them. I will be fastest of sectors, which I believe may, may be important. And I will be fastest on other that are not important. So one, let us look at what we hope to achieve during this uh, presentation. First, we hope to achieve the goal of every listener will be able to know why is video conferencing important to contemporary services delivery. Two, we'll be looking at uh, major terms that are related to the issue of video conferencing or ICT for health delivery. We'll be, looking, we'll be describing issue of privacy and uh, health, tele -health because unlike uh, other fields, there are things that are supposed to be secret, maybe forever, regarding the patients. And then you want to maintain it because you are now in the public domain using the video conferencing. We also have the issue of uh, you be able to explain what I produce. Some things that not just for tele -health. generally when we are on uh, video conferencing, and then uh, we will also relate what are the don'ts for tele -health. And finally, we, we will look at it. How do you ensure that we can apply with these safety measures regarding the tele -ed? These are the major areas we are going to focus on. All of us were aware of the pandemic. At least uh, it has affected virtually everything. And the health sector is at the number one forefront in terms of combating for the first time, people are now aware that uh, maybe other sectors are not as important as the health because uh, you can pay billions to footballers and bosses, but with the health crisis, everybody's at home. So no spot is telling you the importance of the health sector as a major area of focus. And uh, it has brought about the revolution of how health professionals interact and do things. In fact, you must, before now, you people use glove use glove, you use other things, but then you must be extra careful because like, like uh, those of us who are who are just uh, laymen, talk about the very nature that anybody can contact with, with little or no contact. In fact, it has overwhelmed the health services and resources of virtually every nation. And uh, globally, there are so many health workers who pray that God will be with their soul who have paid the supreme price with their life to save others. And then that means the pre-service and in-service education training of health workers have been impacted. I know students are supposed to be on clinic and now most universities are on holiday in some part of the world. So automatically pre-service is gone. The in-service training except through Zoom now. So and these are things that are new things that are happening. So these are the issues we want to talk about. Video conferencing for health service delivery and passenger training is very important. It has been on and that means something. So you can use video conferencing in terms of a clinical consultation. You can prescribe drug and you can interact with medical professionals or health professionals. So it's, it's possible to do information. And then you can also train your staff remotely. And you can use the video conferencing for health retirement things. These are things we are going to talk in full later on. So, when you talk about video conferencing, both the health professionals and support staff can collaborate across distances. When I learned that uh, some fellows were coming down to Nigeria to come out in Nigeria and uh, maybe health personnel regarding the issue of the COVID-19, I, I told somebody that uh, that's not necessary. They can be there in China or anywhere in the world if there is the need. And then they can provide the support. You don't need to move an inch be able to achieve success. So you can use that video conference can assist you. And then you can have greater efficiency and you can focus more 
on patient's care with video conferencing. It has been a, a part of the health services since 1905, if you go into history. That was the first time that anything that has to do with the tele health was talked about 1905. So it's over 100 years. And there are some uh, applications that are available in the market that, that are specific to the health sector. But maybe some of us, we are, we are getting used to them now because of the pandemic. And then it has been around, like I said before, the COVID-19, something. That is the introductory aspect. Let's just go to the tele -ed. So the tele -ed issue has always been uh, there. So it, you have two terms together, tele and et. Tele is simply a word from the Greek, which is at a distance and far off. So whether you're talking about video conferencing, you're talking about uh, video conferencing for et, tele, tele et, telemedicine, you are talking about the same thing because you are talking about giving assistance earthwise to somebody who needs it. Training somebody earthwise to so only do this at a distance. So you are that you have such terms in the dictionary related to telehealth, telepharmacy, where you deliver pharmaceutical care through ICT to patients. Remotely, they are not you can do it. We call it also telemedicine. You care for the patient remote using ICT and then uh, telenursing, among others. Where you use ICT to deliver nursing care and conduct nursing practices. So there are so many. So teledentistry, tele this, tele that. Any area that you have in the health sector, you have tele related issue to that area. So we will be looking at uh, maybe just three areas, just as examples. In the area of uh, telepharmacy, areas of usage, you can order entry service for an inpatient pharmacy. So somebody's at the hospital, and then the hospital doesn't have anything. If you have a very good system, you can uh, order using the teleconferencing uh, technology. It's possible, and uh, it's part of what is done globally. And then uh, you can also remote do remote dispensing. So you can review online and you can go ahead with what you want to do physically. In fact, with social distancing now, this is something that uh, pharmacists will need to apply. So in most cases, it's possible for you, even from the, from the office of the medical doctor, issues the procedure can be done so that it's transferred straight. Instead of asking the people, okay, the, 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 the patient relative, you move to this place, move to that place, just you can go to order everything online and then you can dispense remotely. Then you can review the IV admission remotely, don't seven time. Because I know so there's something you want to mix together and then because you want to put in the uh, the the line so that the, the, the patient these are things that you can you can review it is possible remotely. And then you can give patient counseling. Somebody at the different drug and uh, he has issues instead of traveling all the way from Gumo shop to come and meet you in the London here or from Okoeni. I mean, if I remotely, these are things that you can interact with, can give counseling on the issue of the drug and other things like that. So telemedicine is very bad. It has been used very well. You can uh, you can diagnose, you can uh, treat patients without need for an in-person visit. And that's why instead of uh, somebody staying for several hours at the hospital, so in fact, you can have contact remotely with such a fellow. And then, except when such a fellow needs physical examination that we need to the hospital. So, but there are some that you don't need to visit. By the time you, you talk about the symptoms and other issues, you can, you can uh, maybe look at, okay, this is what is happening. And then you want to provide ethical services. There are so many places in Nigeria that where they don't have real hospital. And then, then you, want to, you want to discuss with the, maybe a nurse or somebody else who is in that village. You can provide the service remotely. There's also, you can monitor vital signs remotely. Uh, you can, uh, these are things you can do. Because there, there are, by the time we talk about specific tele health, uh, tele health applications, these are things that have been, uh, have been developed globally. But I don't know whether Nigeria, whether we have those, those things there. So then you can consult your doctor, and these are the things at times is you are feeling one kind, and then maybe you may not even need a drug, you just need a lot of your doctor. These are things you can do remotely without going to the hospital. 
Then, the, for the telling nursing also, you can, uh, there are things you can use to monitor the oxygen level, the heart rate, respiration, blood glucose, and more. But these are part of the devices that we have in the global now that you can use. So you can contact your, your nurses for help if there is the need. In fact, there are some care organizations, they have nurses, and this, they, they perform uh, assistance uh, for, for patients from, from those centers. So, so they, those things are offered remotely without getting to the level. And then you can, even counseling is part of every part of uh, the services. You can do all these ones remotely. So, the issue of privacy is always a thing. We, are, we have heard about so many things that had happened of recent. So the privacy issue is always a norm in the health profession. Somebody told me that even if your wife has a special problem, except she allows you as a medical doctor to take those back, that is confidential. You can't give the guy the information. So privacy is so important. And when you are using the when you are using video conferencing, probably you are in the public space. There is this uh, there is this uh, common saying in our field. We tell people. Whatever you don't want anybody to see, don't record it. Don't take the picture of it. That's what she's saying. If whether you think it's secret, some way, somewhere, in some in certain ways, it can leak. So, so, the, so you need balance between using the video conferencing and privacy. So I must note, note this. I want to emphasize it. And I, I want us to note this. Not all video conferencing. Uh, uh, applications are good for you. Please note this. I'm um, underlining this, circling it. Not all video conferencing have the privacy aspect for health issues. I do. It's free. I can use it. Please be very careful because I know privacy issue is there in the health sector. I know outside the country people do sue medical personnel or health, health professionals for certain things, and so that's why globally they are standard. In terms of what should be done on and what cannot be done, so not all. And uh, in America, there is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, and that act has guidance for what we are talking about. But I know in Nigeria here, there was a 2017 uh, a bill in the Nigerian Assembly, but I'm not sure the bill had been uh, had been. Uh, that is, is still uh, functional. I'm not sure of that. That is functional. I'm not sure it's, it's functional. But whether it's functional or not, we should know that these are things that uh, that are important. So, because of the privacy issue, I'm going to I'm going to list some of the some, some, some ones that are that are said to be compliant, which have been proved based on the American IPA compliant software. We have the Zoom for healthcare. The Zoom we are using now is just the common Zoom. There is a specific one for healthcare. That one has been customized to take care of privacy and other issues. And it is $12 per month. So and I know it's expensive, but for, for a teaching hospital and others, there is a way they negotiate if you are going to talk about them. So many people use it. You also have the Dossi Me. It has free fashion. And uh, if you want to do it for, as, as a professional individually, that per month. But if we pay for a year, it goes down again. So, and then at uh, the end of the day, you can use it as, as a professional. Then you have the go to meeting, and then you have the professional plan for, for, for air professionals is $12 per month. But if you pay annual fees, it's going to go down again. So, that, that's the thing. There's the medicine you can see for medicine. So, it's, uh, the connect plan is free. And then, if, if that free one has the video and all the facilities that you will need. Not only that, it contains aspect for text messages. For, you can text message your patient from their phone. You can get the message. Once you have uh, credit on your, you can send. It, you can send it to them. So whatever you want to do, you can dictate the test, and then straight will go straight to the patient. And then you have MEND, which is uh, forty nine dollars uh, 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 per month for individual, and you pay it annually, and you can come down again. And you have Ink Central video. This is also a free video conferencing software for healthcare professionals. And these are the ones, there are so many others also. So I, you are going to find them in my reference, or my reference list ladder, so that uh, you can uh, always use them. 
you also have other applications that uh, people are using, which I know. But I can't say I can't classify them in terms of uh, privacy because most of them were not developed really for the S sector. People have sat down without privacy, they have done certain things. So you have the this team meet. It's a, it can be private. If you have a, if a professional, maybe your programmer at Teach Hospital, he can he or she can install it on the Teach Hospital server. And then he can configure automatically other percent you are housing it within your system. So it can be it can be secure in that wise. It can be secure in that wise. Then you have the Google Meet, which is which is very popular, that can accommodate up to two people and other things like that. Then you have the Microsoft Team. Then you have a free conference call, and you have so many others that are there. So when you want to make a choice of video uh, video conferencing platform, what do you do? One, ensure that what you are going to choose, that is the how now. Ensure that business privacy is guaranteed in whatever you want to choose. Two, ensure that when you are using it, in terms of the video and the audio, it is reliable. That's why when people talk about, oh, so this one is good, that is as good as Sumo, or this or this, or this, I laugh. Until you have used something, you can't be sure. Don't just assume so that you don't get there and then you have issues. Then, the video quality, ensure it's good. Ensure that it is easy to use. If you must start mastering some technicalities to be able to use it, please just put it by, by the side because your patient and you must be together to be able to use it. And also, it should be, you'll be able to share your screen while you're listening. Thomas Pelo is there, maybe at the TSP too. I'm here in my office, and then uh, we are, I'm sharing my screen. And in fact, there is a way you can, if I can even remotely work on this own system, I can be working on the system. So you should be able to do that one. So if, if, if you don't have it, these are issues that you should consider. And this has to be customer support. When you have when you have issues, you want to be sure that if there are issues regarding that package, somebody is there to assist you. There is regular update. If there is a complaint, they are, they are going to do it on time. Not that it's going to be indefinite. Nobody can tell you about it. These are the things you do. And then bring your own device uh, option. What is the meaning of that? That means any platform, whether it is Android, whether it's Windows based, whether it's iPhone, iPhone, anything, it should be you should be able to work on it. If you must look for a particular device to use it, it's not worth it. Because you are not going to force your patients or your or, or, or your colleagues that go and buy this, that's how it's going to work. And that's why we will we'll be talking about uh, 32 bits. If your system is just like this, you don't need to work on 32 bit system, not oh so it's only 64 that you can work. No, these are things that we, we, we must look at when we are talking about it. And then what are the do's? Sorry. Now, sorry. Now, sorry. Just please, just, just one, just one minute. Just one minute. Now, the do's of telehealth. So, one, there are things we should we should uh, know. If your system has very good camera, fine. Otherwise, you start with a quality webcam and telemedicine platform. That means your own device must be good enough, and then. The platform you are using in terms of the application must be good. Quality in terms of the webcam and in terms of the platform you are using. That is the first thing. Because if, if your webcam is good enough, the platform is not good enough, you are going to have quality, uh, bad output. If you have uh, good telemedicine and your, your system is not good enough, you are going to have a problem. Before you go online, test your hardware 
an internet connection beforehand. Don't just start off and then you realize that there's, there's an issue. As soon as you are going to have it for trading, people are waiting for you. They, are to start, they start at 11 or 10 or 12. The guy says, oh, this is not working. So we are sorry. Please uh, have a with us. You can't do this one. It's not good enough. That means you should have what you call practice session ahead. If you are going to call a guest speaker, be sure the guest speaker knows what he's supposed to do. Otherwise, if it's a first timer, please a day or two before then have a session so that he or she can customize his own system to specification or they can get accustomed to the standard in terms of using the application that is required. This is very important. Also, be punctual. Don't delay start time or waste time. If you are giving your patient or colleagues that you are going to start at so-so so time and there's an issue, <laughs> you are not there, you are talking about uh, 11, the host was, was online, I think by 10.30, when I joined at uh, five minutes to, to 11, he was there already. That's what we call being punctual. For example, if you are the one hosting or you are supposed to be in a meeting as a participant, you are supposed to be there on time. That is the standard. And then dress well as appearances matter if you don't make it. This is very important. Don't assume, maybe, maybe I'm, so, in fact, assume the only difference between all presentation and video presentation is that you are doing it at the comfort of your house. That's the, that's the only difference. But you are doing globally. Look what you are doing now. It's on YouTube. If you are slowly dressed, sharp, in fact, if you are just like a pixie, your parameter is, is dirty, it's going to be on YouTube. That is bad. In fact, you dress well as if you are going to present it. That is the reality. In fact, in a particular hall, you are going to have maybe 5,000, 10,000. But on YouTube, it's going to be there. You can at least you can. Well, once you are you are streaming live on YouTube, it can accommodate one hundred thousand people. And you have on the Zoom like uh, one hundred plan, five hundred, one thousand, ten thousand. So dress well when what when you want to go. This game. Then know when to use video conference or otherwise. There are times we use video that are not really important. They are not really important. Please know when to use video conference. That's why you should not depend between a webinar and a video conference. If you want, you don't want to, to, to interject and to disturb you. I, in fact, I, I always prefer people should use what we call the webinar option. Because in that one, only the participants, only the, the panel members and the host will have their video on. Others can be blocked entirely, except you want to allow him as, as the host. Also, we should look for a quiet. And private place. Today I have to move out to my office because I know if I'm at home, there may be people coming to my room and then there may be noise. It's, that's why the standard, if you are going to have a professional training for others, is that you look for a studio that, that has acoustic elements so that uh, you can do it very well. Then the next one is uh, your environment should be well lighted. People should not be looking, we are, we are the speaker because it's, it's too dark. Look for an area that's well lighted. People can see you as if you are you are in front of them in the big hall. Also, blur or change your background. I had witnessed some uh, since this uh, COVID thing started in, uh, in March in Nigeria. I witnessed scenes where some people were in their bedroom, and while they were there, their background was visible. And when you see what is happening, you wonder what is really happening. In fact, you see, once you are using the video, you have asked the global world to be part of your privacy. That is the world. You must, that's why if you look at the, uh, I'm using the, the, the Zoom now as an example. The arrow by the video icon, if you click it, it's talking about a factual background. You can change your background to either static or animated video so that nobody's going to see your background and, we are, and that is the standard if there's a need for you if you if, if your background is good enough nobody's going to attack you fine but you can blow your background 
when you are not speaking. The standard, don't just enter into, and you are talking with your husband or with your wife or with your children. Everybody can hear what you are saying. It's not good enough. Ethically, it's bad. So once you join, if the host is not uh, activating the mood participant on entry, mute yourself. That I don't join any meeting with my video or with my audio on. It's later on I put those ones on. That is the standard procedure. You are joining the meeting. Next, keep time, uh, lack time in mind. For instance, now, somebody is telling me something in, uh, in Britain. You should be able to know. Britain's time is Nigeria time now. That's all right. But it, 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 at in time, it is going to be one, well, one hour behind us. Maybe maybe a part of Canada is eight hours. Maybe Australia is nine hours. These are things you'll be able to know so that you are going to join, you know how to schedule. For example, you are scheduling something and then you put it at a level here. That's uh, too heavy for some people. And you want them to join you globally. These are things you must say. Uh, yeah. And then, when you have reason to pause or to look at it from what is happening, if, if you are the major presenter at that time, communicate like, like I had issue with my uh, with my writing, because uh, then I have to apologize that, please, for a minute, that's the standard you do, communicate. And then, when you are using it for consultation with your patient, if you have his record before and put it by your side so that whatever you want to say, he or she is there. You can always refer to it. Oh, last time you came, this was what we had. So that it's not, it's not that why is there. Others are waiting on, on the queue, partially or remotely to, to connect with you. They say, please, excuse me. You now go, you start looking for five. Whatever you need before and have everything ready. If you must look at a document to be able to give advice or, or advice, have everything ready. Also, engage your patient. Don't just be the one who will be talking. You are, you are using it to, for consultation. Engage your patient. Okay, well, what are the issues? Let him talk. Don't talk to him. Talk with him. Discuss with him. Don't just talk to him or her. So let engage your patient so that at least you can. Because you are not very careful, it becomes like a television station. The news is uh, because the, 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 the news, and then you can't respond when people are telling lie. So engage your patient, don't just talk to them, discuss with them. And then, if you are going to give post appointment, uh, post patient appointment, please be very clear so that somebody knows. Ha, I don't even know what you are saying. That is the that is the next one that we are going to do. So you don't of of it because of time because I'm looking at my time is. Uh, is, is fast spent. I don't, I, I don't want to use even a minute above what I've been given. Now, the don'ts of uh, telling it. What are those things that you should not do in telling it? For, for instance, we are having what we call a meeting now. It's not a webinar. There are some ways, some people, when they are scanning, they won't activate that. Participants should not be able to unmute themselves. And somebody while you are talking, somebody will be digesting, somebody will be doing fast, people will be entering and be doing different things. So please, if you are at a session, a meeting, a factual or video conferencing meeting, what do you do? Don't talk over each other. Use the chat platform to make comments so that somebody can uh, read it. What I do in most cases, if I'm uh, presenting, there is somebody else who is there to assist to say these are the issues. And then in most cases, there may be the question function. So use it to ask questions so that people can, uh, instead of uh, interjecting others, and then it becomes so loud. Then, don't multitask during video meetings. For instance, now, while you are, the, you are, while you are there, except then you are looking at your phone. Somebody can see that you are, you, you are there. Even if you are not talking, even if you are not talking, and so, somebody can see your, your, your video on, I can see that you are, you, are, you are reading your phone, you are going through it, or you are the newspaper, it's not good enough. Don't multitask during video meetings. He said that you find you, you mute yourself visually and audio wise so that nobody will see what you are doing. But I believe this is just within a time frame. Be part of the meeting totally without disturbing the session. Then your camera should be well positioned so that uh, your head is not. Above the camera position, at least it's, it's just showing your your, your 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 neck down, 
or, the, or that uh, there is too much space. So ensure that it's, uh, it's balanced. Ensure that it's not too high and it's not too low. Particularly if you are using an attached camera. If you are using an attached camera, it's very important. And then, some people have certain habits. They can hardly stop it. Ethically, it's bad for you. While you are on the screen, you start eating. Start eating. You start uh, taking wine. You drink beer or you smoke. It's, these are not good habits. The only, the only thing that is... Okay, those things that are acceptable globally, which is just the norm, there is no law, is that you can sip water, you can sip your tea, but eating, taking wine, beer, or smoking, they are not part of the those that are that, that are worthy of being exhibited when you are doing video conferencing. Also. I've, there was a case we were presenting in, uh, in February, our association, one of our colleagues, uh, a, a, a part of the panel, had another assignment with, in the institution. And while he was riding, he, went, he was with us. There was so much noise, in fact, I had to remove him. So do not join if you do meeting while driving. It's very important, even for your own safety, it's, it's wrong. If you must use the video facilities and the, or the hodo facility, just look for a place that is safe away from the highway. Before that somebody, you are not parked, somebody will come and hit you again. Away from the highway, park and then join the meeting. Or just forget about it. Do not join video meeting while driving. That is a global standard. Please do not do it. And then uh, if you are not using certain applications, you are not going to share your screen, it's better you close those applications. Because your device, whether it is mobile, whether it is desktop, whether it is laptop, whatever what you have, as capacity in terms of memory and CPU. Once you are using several applications, they are going to consume at the same time, and that can slow down. And I used to say it, if you don't have very good bandwidth, you don't need to, if you are in a meeting, eh, just promote your video. It will still go, except that the one that is presenting, you don't need to put your video on. Those are the principles. And then, uh, whatever you are doing, ensure that you maintain what we call uh, factual ethics. I've, I've seen cases, somebody will sit uh, on his bed and uh, with his leg up and, and he will join a meeting. Or somebody will be, be, <laughs> will be on the bench with his smoke smack down. Joining a meeting, they are, they are, those, are, those are bad behaviors, factually. Once you are part of a meeting, it's as if you are, you are in a classroom. You are, in, you, are in, you are in a hall. So, ensure the decorum and the standard is maintained. Don't start assuming that maybe I can just do what I want to do now. If it's my room, then please, if, if you feel you want to be comfortable, if you want to join a meeting, please don't put on your video. You don't want to see your bedroom. If, if it's the, the best in the world, it's better for you. Yeah. So, these are the things that uh, they don't. And then the next is the security issue, which is very important, and I'm going to use this area to, to because you have this privacy issue, you, have, you also have the security issue. Privacy means, as regards each individual, who is your patient, or that you are, what is secret is secret, except with his permission or with a permission. And I'm sure you, 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 you have it as part of your training. I'm not in that field. But every discipline has its own privacy aspect. There is a word that is so popular now that is Zoom bombing. It is true, Zoom is just one of the several applications you use. Just like Google is also one of the so people say, go and Google it. So Zoom bombing is becoming like uh, the general word for every video application I'm using it. I'm not uh, advertising for Zoom, so please. But that's what you find on the net now, Zoom bombing. What is Zoom bombing? You have uh, you, you have security and privacy, which is very important in, in virtual in, 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 in video communication for health. You find that globally, there are being intruders. There are there will be so many places where you are at a meeting, somebody will intrude naked. And other, other things, you just post pornography, you post it onto the platform. And people will start doing that thing. You can imagine we are, how we are now. Somebody posting things that we don't want to have. What will happen? You will be surprised 
that this, that it's going to shock us. No matter how, in the next 10 minutes, the picture, the idea, the session will be disrupted. So, to avoid such a thing, there are things people are suggesting. Ensure that you don't use consumer grade software. What is the meaning? <laughs> we are going to advise you as professionals in the health sector. It is true there are free softwares. And software, rather. Sorry, not softwares. Free software. Please and please, they are not in most cases good enough for you. The security is not as good as when you pay and then you have quality software. Zoom work. was not as well as it was before now, but the moment there was also there is what you call a waiting room. Waiting room, you can see who's going to join, and then you, you will be able to admit or not admit. It's very important if you're not very sure, except you are, want people to just join, and there is no security fear. But if you are going to have security issue with such a meeting online, please use the waiting room features. And uh, your meeting, ensure that you use password. And this password, don't just make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. Those uh, 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 ten, 10 words, hard letters, hard symbols. Add alphabets so that somebody and you send it to participant. Those participants will use it. So those soon bombers, except somebody is sharing it from their angle. In fact, that's why the webinar is so good. Webinar we allocate each individual a particular link and a different uh, uh, password so that you can't use somebody's next password. It won't work. You must join through your email, or you can do it. Also, you, you don't share link to teleconferences across Sophia social media post. We do it very well. But because we don't have any issue with security of the world, people to hear about it. But you have a critical issue. You want to have retraining or, or a certain meeting of, of your department. Please ensure you don't share through, uh, through what? You can send to individual, um, individual test and, and then they should use it. And then use the waiting room so that somebody will strange. And that's why if somebody is joining with uh, Galaxy 007, don't allow the fellow to enter. That's why nobody should be anonymous in such a meeting. It's not security uh, wise to allow such a value. That's why when, except I'm doing uh, the general one, there are specific where I remove people in training sessions. I will tell them before they will start that if you don't use your real name or Alias, we are known with you, you won't be able to join. And then, and then once, I, once you are removed, you can't join that session again. That's what I've done with my own account. So that once I remove you and I want you to please, so, 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 go and rename yourself so that I can, I don't want to, I don't need to be anonymous. If you don't agree with me, I'm going to remove you. So please don't share your link. And also, don't allow participants to screen share by default. Remember now, the host. I have to ask him to allow me to share. If you are, if you put it by default that anybody can share, is there as part of the setting? The moment, the moment they join you, they can. In fact, while you are sharing your screen, they can offer you. That's the clear. So only the host should be able to allow anybody to share. That should be the one you are going to allow. Then, if there is an update, read regularly. Update the fashion software you are using. I updated my own uh, Zoom before the 30th of uh, May. I don't it again last week. So we felt they are doing up every day. So also, if you see that somebody is trying to join the meeting, who intrudes or is unruling your meeting, you get such a fellow. Get such a fellow. And then the standard is this: if you have what we call a uh, Invitation that is special, and you don't want people to interject you. Once people have just tell everybody that uh, if you are going to be with us, so by 10 30, I'm going to lock the meeting. It's like you have 
lock the entrance to the hall. Nobody can enter again. The same thing will happen. You can also lock your meeting, virtually. Anybody who is outside the time frame will be locked out. That is one. However, there are times somebody will have joined. There is a problem with his network and it's out. You want to add him back. You, you can also add him back. You just open the meeting a little bit. Others would like to join again. Just allow that fellow who had missed because of the network who had uh, been thrown out to join again. That's what you can. So lock the meeting once you have uh, one, once the parties have joined have joined. And yeah, self is very important. And what you are doing is not secret. You want it for record. Don't record meetings. But if you know you are going to record it again, if you use the, the Zoom, there are two options. You, you can record in the cloud or you can record on your system. In the cloud, the Zoom will use the default word to record. You don't have control. And it's possible people at the Zoom have access to it. Not only that, their hackers can also hack their, 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 their uh, cloud environment. And then your information is there in the public domain. That I, will, I will recommend first. You want to record, record your system. And when you want to save, save not with the name Zoom and used to, because it's going to give Zoom something. So I change the name now. If somebody is tracking it, they don't be able to get it. Change the name when you want to save. So these are the things you, you do. We and have then, three minutes to go, sir. Yes, 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 I can see. Then educate all your personnel, those about security issues in uh, hosting meetings. And then uh, there is this uh, man using the Zoom. There are two slides. One is on uh, turn off, turn off. So, so you just go through it. What you turn off, what you turn off. Is this from the setting of Zoom? Ensure that you do all these things. You turn off, turn off, turn what is turnable, turn off. So the, 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 the man, the bell, Fred, Fred Landa, he is an expert in the video conferencing security based on the Zoom standard because that is most popular in the world right now. So he had given us all this turn off, turn off, turn off. At the same time, there is the turn on. This is your turn on for security. Uh, sake, these are things that uh, you should be able to do. So you should be able to do. And then finally, uh, just to conclude my presentation, it's just a recap, key takeaway. One, it is part of our life. Whether we like it, if you don't know about it now, please go and learn about it. That's the first thing. As we are talking about this one, things are changing every day. You must move with the trend. Ensure you keep yourself abreast of the development in the field as health professionals because it's very important for you and, and you for you and I. Follow the ethical standards for their use and then ensure that you are conscious about security and patient privacy. Don't just go for the cheapest and the most common. Be conscious of what? Security and privacy. And these are the reference points. I'm going to immediately I'm going to send it to the to the host once I finish. Thanks so much for this village. I hope uh, I have not wasted your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It has been really, really educating and uh it was splendid. We thank you, Professor Modashir, for that presentation. It was very beautiful and it is very impactful. Uh just to just a quick one. Prof has taken us through a lot uh, in uh, video conferencing app, especially as it relates to uh, health professionals, pharmacists, physicians, nurses, and health professionals. And uh, he has uh, made some very uh, germane notes that we should all pay attention to, especially for uh, consultation. Uh, my take is uh, you can imagine that there is a consultation going on and you're, you're talking to your patient. If you need to see the patient physically, then I think you should have the patient uh, come to the hospital. For example, now I can hardly tell uh, the color of all the clothes that we are. So how do you tell if a patient is pale or not? If you look at my hand, you might not be able to tell if my hand is pale, if there is blood there. And if you look at my eyes, you might not be able to know whether it is pale. So for when it is necessary to have 
a patient come over to the hospital, then the patient must come over to the hospital. Then when you're using telemedicine, when it is not avoidable, then the camera power, that is the webcam you are using, must be to the standard. There are standards there out there that is specifically for telemedicine. Must be, it, it, it's not uh, two megapixels of the camera we are using on our laptop or five megapixels. They are high uh, megapixels. And uh, at the same time, he has uh, really, really hammered on privacy. On privacy, there are some uh, you have to purchase a software that secures you and that you can actually make the uh, proprietors of the software liable if any other thing. But if you go uh, online and download a free software, it's not uh, likely you will get all those kind of um, privileges. And uh, he has uh, given us an insight on how the ethics of being online, that when we're online, we mute. Even if the uh, host does not mute us, we mute. And we did we, we dress her decently. We, uh, if uh, bandwidth is very low, we put off the level of the consumption of bandwidth, which is uh, the internet uh, video. We can actually block the video such that we are able to uh, judiciously use the low bandwidth we have to uh, hear what the presenter is saying. It took us uh, one very important thing he said is that uh, he mentioned a particular application that works on the intranet that the hospital can actually latch on, which is the GST mix. That is a very good one because uh, for other uh, tele uh, video conferencing applications, you will require internet access. But for this GST mix, it is hosted by the hospital and the hospital server. So all what is going on around, you can have your patients that are pro probably uh, are COVID positive in one place, moving from one office uh, to the other. He also uh, uh, mentioned uh, a whole lot of things about uh, particular uh, applications designed for healthcare. He mentioned the uh, demand, the medicine, and the Zoom for healthcare. On this note, uh, we will be asking uh, uh, share a video that uh, will give us another angle and insight on what a video conferencing uh, app can do for us in the health sector. The host, over to you, please. Can the host hear me? The host, we're expecting you to share the video. This week's video, it is... Watch what's going on behind. So, we want to stop here. We're going to share this video later. So, I think we can continue with the other one, maybe. Uh, Mr. Good. Mr. Good? Thank you. Thank, thank you for that uh, presentation. Thank you. And uh, we can see that uh, we, we actually uh, saw, uh, had the similitude of uh, what Prof. Mudashir had presented with the way and manner we conduct ourselves. There are similarities there about how uh, we appear uh, while we are doing our presentation. Now, we will want to invite uh, Femtech for 10 minutes, uh, Femtech uh, IT, if they are in the house. I don't know if they, are, they, if they have a representative in the house, Femtech IT, to have their presentation. Huh? Yeah, Ron, maybe you can go to question and answer now. Is that good? Okay. Now, we will have um, uh, a room for comments question and answers 
But the way we are going to do it is the way Prof has actually taught us that we should not all talk at the same time. So let's utilize uh, the participant screen by the uh, uh, right hand side and raise our hands if we have to, uh, you know, if we want to answer, uh, say a question or ask one, we should just use the raise hand button so that uh, your mic will be unmuted and you'll be able to talk. All mics are going to be muted, but if you need to ask a question, please raise your hand. There's a button at the right side, just uh, underneath the participant, you will see raise hand. Then you can uh, raise your hand, then the host will allow you. So I can see Professor Baba Isa raising his hand. He wants to comment or ask a question. Please, the host, unmute uh, Professor Baba Isa. Thank you. Thank you. Well, mine is not a question per se, but commendation. I want to commend the pharmacy department for partnering this effort in University of Illinois Teaching Hospital. It has been a great eye opener, and sincerely, we can do lots virtually without having a physical meeting, despite uh, the pandemic, uh, whatever. The professor, the guest lecturer, Professor Lali Yusuf, has actually lived up to expectation. I'm really excited with the way he has presented, and uh, I want to commend the pharmacy department for inviting him. Of course, he's a great educational analyst, uh, an educational technologist, and uh, one of the people who pioneered um, open and distance learning at the University of Illinois. Thank you, Prof, and thank you to pharmacy department. The moderator, thank you as well. You've been, a, you, you've been doing a wonderful job. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. So we'll have uh, comments from other people. Can we see some hands if you want to ask questions? You can check the chat box. You can check the chat. Some 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 people some question has sent me first chat. Yeah. Mr. Gold, you can check the chat. Yes, I'm on it, sir. Okay. Uh, the, the, the some of the questions that uh, I can see another hand that is raised now. Okay, who is that? Kamil uh, is raising his hand. Okay. Mr. Kamil. Let's unmute yourself, ma'am. Mr. Kamil, you can unmute yourself now. You have the floor. He's to understand. Aha. Uh -huh. I also want to commend the pharmacy department uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And uh, I want to commend the resourcefulness of the guest lecturer, uh, my friend, uh, Professor M. O. Yusuf. Uh, he's a very brilliant mind, and uh, alhamdulillah for his life. Um, let me quickly say that, uh, unfortunately, I missed the most part of the presentation because uh, I was just uh, uh, disconnected. My audio was disconnected. It was towards the end of the presentation that I was connected. Yeah, but... So I want to appeal that the the host should make a copy of uh, the presentation uh, available so that uh, so those of us that missed the part of the presentation, uh, we can pick some useful information, uh, which I believe uh, the presenter has given all, all of us there. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Um, we have uh, during uh, Professor Mudashir's uh, presentation, Professor Isa Baba also Hello, good morning. That good morning. an app that is Slack that can be used uh, for the purpose of uh, conference call. 
virtual conference call. Do we have another person with a comment? Well, there's one question that uh, I would like to ask personally, and uh, I don't know if Prof is still online to answer my question. The question goes, does, do we have um, specialized equipment like hardware that is for uh, teleconferencing or uh, video conferencing in the health sector? Yes, like I said, there are several of them. And the idea in the market, there are some that are made specifically for the health sector. The, and uh, what they did was that programmers had sessions with professionals across fields based on the, their needs. In fact, there are some remotely, you are talking about uh, looking at the, maybe the temperature, all that is, there are some that they have done such a level that it doesn't just, you can do them remotely without physical contact. It's only when you need to come physically, maybe you don't want to take sample that you have to go to them. You know, some of these things are there that uh, the Nigerian sector will say that uh, God will now open the mind of the people in power to know those things they should do. They, they are there already. There are so many. In fact, if you read some of the things that I, I use as attachment, you can also go online. There are some that uh, our institutions should just make effort to buy. And just to address the concern of uh, some participants when they join, those joining with with uh, mobile phone, there's always a problem when you join with mobile phone. But you will have to go to the first page because it will show several pages. On this page, you are going to have like four participants. And if, you, and if it will show you that, uh, unmute yourself. Now, there are two symbols. There's a symbol that shows uh, with uh, like head, head gear, microphone. That one, you, when you click it, automatically it will activate your both your audio and also your ability to be able to talk later if you are unmuted by the if you are unmuted by the host. If you don't use that one at times, uh, you find you'll be able to hear. You won't be able to. In uh, fact, you but you, uh, you'll be able to talk, but you won't be able to hear what they are saying. So I think I've addressed the question. Thank you. We have uh, Mr. Sarafadin raising his hand. You're welcome. You have you have the floor, please. Well, it's, it's not joining with the doctor. Mr. Sarafadin, you have the floor, please. Ask your question or your comments. I don't, I don't know what's happening to my audio, but we can hear you now. We can oh, hear you can you. hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, good afternoon over there. Um, I want to commend the effort of the presenter and the University of Illinois Teaching Chino Hospital for this uh, beautiful idea. Uh, it's a great initiative, and I just want to say that it is the only thing now. In most rural part of the of the world, including the UK and the US, you know, um, apart from uh, using it directly between patient and physicians, they use it in rural areas where there are accident or emergency. Why patient is in the ambulance being rescued by nurses or physician assistants? They can consult surgeon along the way and do minor operation even in vehicles before they reach the hospital. So it uh, seems to be the main um, platform to help people in the developing world because they believe that phone penetration is very high. Virtually everybody has the cell phone now. Even if it's not a smartphone, once it can, uh, it's a capacity for video and uh, audio, it can do virtually what is required to save a life. 
the other thing that is common here now is uh, in the US is um, they use devices, what we call point of care devices, where patient parameters can be tracked real time. They even wire the entire room of some very old patients or patients that are in critical care and have been discharged from the hospital to their residences. So things like uh, oxygen, blood pressure, blood glucose can be measured and recorded real time. And whenever there is a, an alert level is passed, physician and nurses can be communicated or can be alerted immediately so they can take action. I have to consult the patient on phone or send somebody to his or her residence. And um, in the long-term care where I have my clinical practice, uh, what the presenter mentioned about triage is very important. Nurses, physicians, pharmacists, everybody is communicating in real time. You can share lab results. You can even go to independent lab where patient parameters are stored in lab reports. So you can access it as a pharmacist, as a nurse, or as a physician. And so all of you can take decision what to give, how much to give, when to give, and those kind of things. So it is really helping people. So my hope is that um, we will have reliable Wi-Fi network. Now, phone carriers are going to be able to enable uh, interconnectivity among themselves. So that, like the presenter said, it doesn't really matter what kind of device you are using. If you are going to do, do the BOID, bring your own device, then that interconnectedness is very important. They, they struggle with it even in the US. And I'm sure uh, the presenter will talk about the challenges most people face with uh, interoperability. Instruments don't work together initially until governments start to enforce it. So I'm not sure how that is going to be done back home if a Nigerian government is going to step in to make sure that works. So um, there's a lot to talk about in this area. It's an exciting moment for everyone and it promises to improve health delivery to remote area or even the, the, the remotest part of the world. So I just hope that we are going to have a share of it in Nigeria. I was talking to the DG for property health in Abuja. I was thinking of electronic health record. That's a primary necessity because you want to have patient record following them everywhere they go. So that way, it doesn't matter whether you have a primary physician or not. Any doctor can consult you anywhere, anytime. But without electronic health record, sharing patient information, having you to take care of them will be very, very difficult. So I don't know how that's going to happen, but I spoke with them and we are still talking. I, I don't know how far it is going to go. If you are lucky, it will get somewhere. I'm sure you understand how things work with uh, our I mean, government. So if we are lucky to have that process move forward, we may be uh, getting electronic health records at least started in some primary health care centers so that we can do trial and dissemination kind of thing. We can extend it to other areas of the, uh, of the health care services in, in Nigeria. So again, brilliant idea. I mean, I, I think it's the way to go and we should just keep it going. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We will entertain uh, one more or two more comments and um, qu or questions from our uh, uh, participants. Please, we need you to raise up your hands. I can still see Mr. Sarafadin raising up his hand. You have the floor. No, he has done that. So, he, we call another person? He has, he has contributed his own. But, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. He's the same person as Hamosa. Yes. Sir. Okay, okay. So um, we'll have somebody else come up. We should plan to round up. Yeah. I we're planning to round up now. Yeah. And now we'll be rounding up with a vote of thanks from Pharmacist Belo, who is who happens to be the host. Before his vote of thanks, I will really need to say a job well done to both the presenter and himself. Thank you so much. 
hand uh, over to Mr. Brian, uh, pharmacist Brian Bello. Okay, I want to start by thanking the guest speaker of a job well done. We thank you most sincerely. We learned greatly and it was so impactful. I want to mention that it was you I will first learn how to use Zoom and has been so beneficial to many today. And I want to thank all our participants from within the country and from outside the country, from the US, from the UK, our, our lecturers, our most senior colleagues, our haters who are together with us today. We thank you for taking your time and spending them with us. We thank you for coming and wish you the best. So the next week is going to be another day for us. Thank you and God bless all of us. Thank you.